It's time for a head-to-head, -head, mono a mono smart switch cage match between the Sonoff Mini and the Shelly One. These are the criteria that I'm going to use to compare these two smart switches. The Shelly One has been out for about a year now, and when it first came out, the big comparison was between the Shelly One and the Sonoff Basic. But as of just a few weeks ago, Sonoff came out with the Mini, which seems to be their answer to the competition they face from the Shelly One. I thought it seemed like a good time to see how they actually stack up side by side. So here we go. We've got to start off by comparing price. The big advantage that Sonoff has had over Shelly or anybody else is that they put out the least expensive smart switches of anybody. But when it comes to comparing the Sonoff Mini and the Shelly One, that gap has narrowed quite a bit. Sonoff is still cheaper. When you get them directly from IT, with shipping included, they're a little over $10. Or you can get them from Amazon for $11. The Shelly One, on the other hand, direct from the Shelly website, plus shipping, is about $13.75. Or you can buy them direct from Amazon for $12. Sonoff gets the point for this one, because we're comparing price, and theirs is less expensive. But as we go along, you'll see that you're getting quite a bit from the Shelly for that extra dollar or two. The next point for comparison is size. You can see by looking at them that the Shelly is a little smaller than the Sonoff Mini. We measure them. It's not an optical illusion. The Shelly really is a little smaller. The Shelly is the shape that it is so that it will fit nicely in the back of a switch box that they use in a lot of countries in Europe. For the US, it probably doesn't matter which one of these, they both fit fine. But technically, since it's smaller, Shelly gets this point. Our next point, the ability to connect an external switch that isn't the reset button. This was a big advantage that Shelly had when it first came out, because at the time, we were comparing with Sonoff Basic, and if we wanted to use an external switch, we had to solder on some wires. Then Shelly came along and gave us a couple of contacts so we could use existing wiring and existing switches without modifying the device at all. The Sonoff Mini is now equalized on that point. They also provide contacts for us to connect an external switch, including our existing light switches. And using the existing light switches can make all the difference when you're scrounging for WAF points. There are a couple things I want to compare with these connectors though. I gotta say I'm not real fond of either of these connectors, but I noticed that they're different. So I want to compare their strength. And the only way to do that is to stick a wire in there and see how hard it is to pull out. In the US, most of the wire that we have in our walls is this solid copper. So that's what I'm going to try first. One thing I've seen with these kind of connectors on other devices is that if you tighten them down too much, they don't hold very well at all. All right, this is going to be very scientific on how hard it is for me to pull it out. Ooh, that wasn't very hard at all. Try this one. Boy. Wow. That was just too easy to pull out. I got to try it again. <laughs> Part of the problem I think with these connectors is when you fill them, like I'm filling them with this wire that barely fits in there, the mechanism that they use to hold the wire in place doesn't really get a chance to do its job correctly. Tighten it down. Still can pull it out. Still easier to pull out. So that was solid copper wire. Let's try stranded copper wire. This wire is a little smaller and I think it's going to give some of these connectors a little better chance to make a good purchase. Okay. Hard to pull out, but still pulled out. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that tells you that. Man. Okay. Sonoff wins. <laughs> Their connectors definitely hold these wires stronger than the Shelly. What's next? Next point of comparison is accessibility of GPIO pins. This one's a bit of a conundrum, and here's why. On the Shelly, you can get to the serial pins that you need for flashing. Ground 3 volts, RX, TX, and GPIO 0. The Sonoff, on the other hand, does not make the flashing pins accessible. 
you can get to RX, TX, ground, and three bolts on the back side of the Sonoff Mini, but it requires a little bit of delicate soldering, which probably isn't something that everybody wants to do. So if your purpose for accessing these pins is to flash with different firmware, then the Shelly wins. However, the main issue with the GPIO pins on the Shelly is this. Did you hear that? That is the beep of death. <laughs> That's because the ground pin is directly connected to the line in terminal. That means if you have this thing powered up with mains voltage, you're going to have 120 volts right here. And that's not going to work too well if you're trying to connect a sensor. I'm not sure exactly what would happen, but I imagine it would involve the release of some magic smoke. The Sonoff Mini, on the other hand, has the GPIO pins isolated from the high voltage stuff. So you can connect something like this temperature and humidity sensor. So who wins? Shelly makes the GPIO pins accessible, but they're really only useful for flashing. Sonoff doesn't make them very accessible, but they're useful for adding a sensor. I say we split them. Point for each. One more thing about GPIO pins before we move on, and that is this. Dimitar, the mastermind behind the Shelly, has indicated that they're going to make use of those GPIO pins in the near future and give us the ability to add things like temperature and humidity sensors. That's fantastic, but I can't give you a point now for something that might happen in the future. But I'm still glad to hear it. What's next? The next thing we'll consider is the input voltage. Both of them will work with 120 or 240 AC voltage, but only one of them can work with lower voltage, and that's the Shelly. Under this little tab here, there's a jumper. Maybe with some tweezers you could get down in there and get it. Or you just pop the top off. If you move this jumper from these two pins to these two pins, you can now power this with 12 volts DC. Sonoff has a low voltage option, which is the Sonoff SV, and it's a good device. I've used it for a lot of things. But this is something unique that only the Shelly has. That's a point for the Shelly. Since we've got them both open, let's talk about the relays. The Shelly relay is rated for 16 amps. The Sonoff Mini relay is rated for 10 amps. In most situations, you're probably not going to get very close to either one of those numbers, especially if you're just using these to switch lights on and off, and you're using LED lights, which you should be doing. The important difference here is that because the Shelly has a 16 amp relay, and most of us use 15 amp circuit breakers. If you were to add a huge load to the Shelly, the circuit breaker would trip before the relay failed. That might not be the case with the Sonoff. So that's another point for the Shelly. Next, let's talk a minute about the software. Both the Shelly and the Sonoff have their own apps. The Sonoff app is called eWe Link, and it's fine. You can add devices, you can set up scenes, which are kind of like automations. There's not a lot to it but it does the job fine. On the other hand, the Shelly app is pretty nice. It does the same kind of things where you add devices, put them in rooms, give them scenes or automations. But the Shelly app does a couple other really cool things too. I really like that you can upload your own photos. So when you're organizing your devices into rooms, you can take pictures of the rooms and the pictures will show up on the app. And the same goes for devices. You can change the icons or again, you can upload pictures. That's pretty cool. Also, because a lot of the Shelly devices have power monitoring, they have a whole view on the app where you can just see your power consumption. Now, I don't use either of these apps because I use Home Assistant, but if I was going to use one, it would be the Shelly. That's another point for the Shelly. Now let's consider the firmware that these devices come with. Sonoff's made some strides recently to try and be more DIY friendly. If you want to see more about how to get your Sonoff working in DIY mode, there you go. The Sonoff DIY mode is really only good for uploading other firmware like Tasmoda. The Shelly firmware, on the other hand, is really great. It's got a lot of nice features, especially for those of us that like to tinker. In addition to all of the settings that you have access to through the app, every Shelly device is also available through a web server at its own IP address. When you put the device IP address in a web browser in your local network, you get a page that looks a lot like the app. But there are a couple of settings here that you can access through this web server that you can't access through the app. Under Internet and Security, 
there's an advanced developer settings menu, and this is where you can enable MQTT. With MQTT enabled, you really don't need another firmware. You can control this device and get information from it to use in your smart home hub of choice. It is important to note that if you're going to use MQTT, it automatically disconnects the Shelly from the cloud. And if you enable the cloud, it takes away your ability to use MQTT. But that's probably fine since using MQTT means you're running a lot of things locally and not relying on the cloud anyway. Even though Shelly makes it really easy to flash their device with a different firmware if you'd like, their stock firmware is good enough for a DIY guy like me that I still use the stock firmware on the Shelly devices that I run in my house. That's saying a lot. So on firmware, Shelly gets the point. I almost want to give them two points because it's that good. A couple other safety things to consider. First, operating temperature. This year Shelly has been running for maybe five minutes. So I'm going to laser the temperature and see what I get. The desk is 22 degrees Celsius. There's 26. And 26 is the highest I'm getting with this. Now, this. This is just a good excuse to use some fun toys. Looks like according to this, the max is 29. Great. Now the Sonoff. And the infrared camera on the Sonoff shows us the hottest spot is also 29. And the laser, 24. And the laser shows a max of 24. So as far as heat, it's a draw. One point a piece. The last thing I want to compare is safety certifications. Both the Shelly and the Sonoff have a lot of certifications that apply to Europe and maybe other parts of the world. But the Shelly is the only one that is UL listed for the United States. That's a pretty big deal. For us in the US, that means if you install a Shelly, and have a fire or some other kind of damage in your house, your homeowner's insurance will pay for the damages. If you have the Sonoff installed in your house and have the same kind of malfunction resulting in fire or anything else, it's not UL listed, which in theory at least means your homeowner's insurance might not pay for the damage. There are not a lot of smart home devices that are UL listed. So Shelly wins big on that point. So what's the final score? It's close, but on the factors that I compared, Shelly wins. What do you think about my comparison? What did I miss? What other things should I have looked at? I gave each of these criteria the same weight. That's probably not really accurate. There are a few things that matter more than other things. To me, the advantages of the firmware on the Shelly, the fact that it's UL listed, and the rating of the relay should be worth extra points. Now, I'm not one to say that one device is junk and the other device is the only one you'll ever need. They're both good. They both have their pros and their cons, and they can both be the right device depending on your situation. I like Sonoff, and I like the Mini, but if I had to choose to fill my house with one or the other, I'd go with the Shelly. But I don't have to choose. I can have both. And I do. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. A lot of my favorite projects use custom PCBs like the BH Ono Free, all of the Quinn LED boards, and the HA switch plate. Ordering from PCBWay is pretty easy, and they're always running some kind of special, so you can be pretty sure that you're getting a good deal. They deliver fast, but most importantly, it's good quality stuff. So if you've got a project that needs custom PCBs, check out PCBWay. So that's it. Sonoff Mini versus Shelly One. What do you think? Did I miss anything? Was I unfair? Which would you choose and why? That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. So that it will fit in the back of the switch box containers. Ah, frickin' frickin' frack. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon, or just like and share my videos. That's easy. 
If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.